Hey everyone, my name is Greg Anderson. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, vulnerability management and how to do less of it because I really don't like vulnerability management. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm Greg Anderson. I'm from uh, Austin, Texas. I am a senior security engineer at Pearson where my role is focused on uh, security automation. I am also the uh, last security engineer at Pearson. I'm the very last holdout. Uh, Pearson is a company that operates in every country of the world but two, um, and we have 40,000 employees, so keeping our application security pipelines running is, is really tough, and uh, it would absolutely be impossible without Defect Dojo. I also uh, am a former San Antonio chapter leader, so if there are any OWASP chapter leaders here, I know and I feel your pain, and uh, a bunch of other boring stuff that no one cares about. So, I'm really not a big fan of new tools. To me, new tools are kind of like ads uh, that you see on like news articles. There's tons of them. 90% of the time, they aren't well documented, or they overpromise, or they simply don't work. And so my hope is that by the end of this, you will think that Defect Dojo is different and easy to use and helpful for you. But uh, to explain why I created this, when I started my career in security, uh, vulnerability management for me was Dratus 2.0. Is anyone still using Dratus? Hands, any brave souls? Excel, oh, come on, being modest. Um, but yeah, so vulnerability management for me was Dratus 2.0. At the time, I was working at Rackspace, and I felt that myself and the team spent 60% of our time doing reports and trying to count metrics rather than uh, doing what we were hired to do, which was try to break into products. And so... We tried a variety of commercial tools to try and get more, get more efficiency out of the team. Um, but honestly, we hated them all. Every single one uh, only seemed to make things worse. That's not going to work. Uh, the other thing that I should note at the time is that I was fresh out of school from the University of Texas which, according to most ranking institutions in the U.S., is in the, the top ten for computer science. So uh, I had a huge ego and an opinion about everything, and so I was in a meeting with my leadership team one day complaining about our tooling, uh, as a lot of the recent college grads do, and uh, I opened my big stupid mouth, and I said, I think I could make something better if you gave me the chance. And so probably because they were tired of hearing me complain and putting up with me, uh, they actually gave me the opportunity. So I was given two weeks to make a prototype. And so if you're familiar with software development, I, I hope you'll agree that two weeks is not a lot of time to create an entire new product. But uh, what came out of those two weeks, they, they really liked. And so I was given an additional two weeks and uh, another developer named Charles Neal, who is a great friend of mine, and uh, Defect Dojo would not be where it is today without him. And so after a month of total development time, we took Defect Dojo into production. We migrated all the data from the tools that we were using into Defect Dojo, uh, and it was an absolute nightmare. We had vulnerabilities that were being double counted on some days and not being counted on others, and that was because we had a local time in Django, but then our database was in UTC, and that took us months to figure out. But um, what came out of it was something that uh, I, I couldn't do my job today now without, and is a pillar of making security engineering work with a ratio of, of 1 to 40,000. And so what Defect Dojo is, is it's a security tool created by security professionals for security professionals with the idea being to remove as much as possible or automate the things we don't like to do. 
such as uh, reporting metrics and baseline scanning. And the other thing that, that came out of this is we had these principles that we wanted to make sure we tried to follow uh, as Defect Dojo aged. So uh, as of now, it's been an OS project for maybe a year and a half, but it existed for about a total of four years, give or take. And so the, the number one principle has always been to allow engineers to focus on what they're best at and what they're paid for, which is breaking into products. We also wanted it to be uh, extremely well documented. And so for the majority of our new features, we have always made the new pull requests include the documentation. Now we're not perfect at that, as I found out in my project review two days ago, because uh, one of the things I wrote was actually missing documentation. Uh, so that's bad, but you know, decent hit rate. The, the whole point being that there are a lot of great security tools out there that people will have a very difficult time using because they're, they're not well documented or the barrier to get them working is so high that it makes it not worth using the tool. Being able to launch easily. So Dojo is written with Python Django and if you're familiar with Python and Django, you can use the traditional uh, means to set up and install it. However, uh, that, that's not really practical for everyone, especially in the security industry. So we created a standalone install script, uh, which I'll show later. It, it's one line, and we support uh, OSX, uh, any um, Linux system that's app-based, any system that's Yum-based. So as far as Linux systems go, the only ones that are really left out are, are BSD systems besides OSX. There's also uh, Docker Compose, and we have a one-click launch to Docker Cloud, which Aaron Weaver created. I don't know if he's here. He might have already taken off, but if you're here, Aaron, thanks, because I really didn't want to do that. We also wanted to make it easy to change. There's a number of security tools that I was really impressed with, but I had no idea how to contribute to, and I didn't have the time to figure it out. So most features in Dojo or if you wanted to create a new feature, can be done by modifying three files. So the, the first is models, which is how we actually get data into the database, and then views for manipulating data, and finally templates, which is what is rendered to the uh, end user that is actually using the application. And so all this talking, what does it actually do? So the, the first feature that I think is, is useful for us is templating. So imagine that you're a security engineer and you're conducting a vulnerability assessment and you find cross-site scripting four times. And you're getting very tired of writing how to fix cross-site scripting four times. Um, rather than rewriting the same thing over and over, you can save something as you write it to be a template and then simply reuse it. Report generation. So Depending on how you interact with development teams, some security teams are still in the, the traditional mantra of, I create a really pretty report and then I throw it over the fence, which you can absolutely do. But the flip side of that is we also have JIRA integration. So if your developers are more comfortable with you pushing directly to their um, issue management, that's also an option. There is a ton of metrics in Defect Dojo, just about every metric under the sun, because uh, every leadership team that I ever worked for always wanted different metrics. And so we just kept building and building and building these metrics. So uh, everything from life through time, what is the most vulnerable product? Uh, what is the most vulnerable endpoint that's likely to get breached? What type of vulnerabilities are we seeing the most? Uh, all that is built in and readily available and also uh, easy to manipulate if there's something more specific or less specific that you're looking for. Uh, the big one is centered around scanners, though. So the ability to combine the results from multiple scanners to one report, or um, we also recently added deduplication. So imagine that you run three scans on an application 
and you feel kind of meh about two of the scanners. You don't really trust the results, and everyone knows that once you start throwing false positives uh, over the wall, it's, it's hard to earn that trust back. So uh, one thing that deduplication does is we look at the results from multiple dynamic scanners, and we use that to essentially establish a confidence interval, and then so we only report on things that uh, all three of them find, or you can also uh, just remove duplicates so that way you're not having to um, make sure that you can go ahead and remove the overlap, essentially. Self-service tools, so the idea being to remove the, the mundane from the security engineers and give developers a, a baseline to work with, again, so you don't have to bother with the uh, point-click work, so to say. And then finally, plugins, something that uh, a, a lot of organizations that I've talked to are excited about is that because Defect Dojo is written in Django, any plugin that works with Django will work with Defect Dojo. The most popular is LDAP integration. So without writing any code whatsoever, if you edit your settings file, you now can use LDAP instead of the user database. No one's asleep yet. That's always exciting. The one thing I did forget to mention is if you do make it to the end, uh, I do have stickers. So if that motivates you, it always does. I don't know why, but easy to please, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so, so this is the, the dashboard that a manager or an engineer would, would first see when they log in. This is not the uh, end-all, be-all metrics page. This is simply to give folks a view of what their week is looking like, what they have going on, and what they've done. So to, I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you, and to kind of explain uh, the model and workflow, I wanted to just give like a real simple example. So I think everyone is, is pretty familiar with Google's products, so that's why I'm going to use Google. So imagine, if you will, that we're all security engineers at Google. And we are tasked with testing Google Docs. So at the highest level, Dojo has a model which is called the product type, which is used to refer to an organization or product line. Uh, for Google Docs, the organization or product line would be Google Suite. And then product types have products, which is just an application or a product. So again, Google Docs. Products have engagements, and the idea of an engagement is to record what you are working on or what the goal of an assessment is. So maybe you're conducting a PCI audit and you're, you're using Nessus because they have a, a pre-configured scan option to do that. Oh, which is a test. Engagements have tests. And then tests of findings, which is uh, what you actually found, the, the vulnerability details, et cetera. And then findings have endpoints, which is where the vulnerability is located. And so uh, just real quickly, these are the, the current scanners that you can um, upload results from. This is missing the OWASP dependency checker, which we added, I think, in the last month and a half. OK, so if you go back through the slides later, I have these, these GIFs of the features actually playing. But I realized that that's not really a, a great representation of, of what's going on and how to work with it. So instead, I'm going to try to break the cardinal rule of presentations and do about 15 minutes of live demo. So we'll see how it goes. But um, as I get into the demo, guys, if you have questions, feel free to uh, interject. It's a great time to ask questions. If uh, for some reason I don't see you because the, the lights are kind of bright and so it's kind of hard for me to see you all, just like throw something. I don't know, do, do whatever. Oh, the other thing I should note about this demo is I've essentially taken two liberties. Oh, let me blow that up.
There we go. Uh, I've, I've taken two liberties because I was concerned about the internet connection. Um, so what I've done is I've already cloned the repository because I was worried I wouldn't be able to download it here. And I also pulled down the necessary resources to do the, the report generation. But so if you were a security engineer and you wanted to set this up, you would you know, just visit our GitHub repository, you do a git clone, and then you would end up here. So the setup script that I was talking about, it's, it's just setup.bash. You run it, wants to know my password. Can you guys see that okay, is that, is that legible? Awesome. So hopefully I remember the passwords. And we pick a database name. Um, it, it's semi-robust, well, I shouldn't say really robust. But if you enter something that already exists, uh-oh, this is why you don't do demos live. Don't worry, we got this. Oh man, that's so scary. It's like I cannot get stuck this early. I would never live that down. I know Matt would be messaging me for years after that. And it's immortalized too in video, right? So. So what it's doing now is it's just applying all the updates. It's, it's pulling the latest, da latest database schema, um, updating the database, applying the initial data. Sets up the initial super user. I'm gonna be lazy and just use root root, very secure. Oh man, okay good, so we've made it this far. So Defect Dojo now is now officially installed and ready to run. So all you have to do to kick off the test server is type in python manage.py run server. Log in with the admin account we created. Oh man, this is going so well. No errors yet. Um, because we, we do continuous integration um, and, and all that, and I'll get to all our, our functional tests, et cetera. Right now, we only have about 60% code coverage, so I'm always worried that I'm gonna fire this up, I'm gonna hit an error. But um, anyways, yeah, so here we are. The first thing you can do is just create a product. Give it a description. Uh, you can also tag it if you want to filter on tags later. So maybe you want to fill in technology information like you're using MySQL and Nginx. Give it a product type. And now we have a product. And then so again, we go to engagements to actually uh, start filling in vulnerability information. Actually. I'm sorry, can, can you say that again? My, um, I, I like to go to electronic music festivals so my hearing's kind of shot. Oh, there's a mic, awesome. Can you make multiple products for test days and production days, or how would that work? Uh, that, that's up to you. So you, you could do it in, in multiple ways. You could create two separate products, or you could also um, specify different endpoints. So it's up to you. You could just create a separate engagement. You could create two products. It's, it's semi-flexible in that sense. So we pick our start and end dates, which is when we hope to start testing and, and hope to finish. And then we click done. Oh. Now we click done. And so finally, right, the exciting part. I'm actually going to put things up there. So. Um, I have two sample scan files, one is zap, one is burp. And so all you do is, is click import scan, hopefully intuitive. 
Uh, I'm going to set everything to come in as active and verified. That That's up to you. It, it's an option to essentially say, do I trust this tool or do I want to vet the findings after I import them? So we'll start with burp. And so now all the findings are in Defect Dojo. They'll show up in all our metrics. They'll show up against the product, et cetera. Uh, but just to give you an example of how the reporting works, I want to also import another tool. So we go back up to the engagement. And again, we import another scan result. I'm just going to go ahead and tag it, because why not? So now we've also uh, imported scan results from Zap. I'm going to go up to the uh, product level. There is kind of a, a quick view of metrics right here. So almost everything is controlled on the right-hand side of the screen. So these are all the, the drop-downs, essentially, to control the individual components. Uh, and then occasionally there will be uh, additional buttons, but almost everything's on the right. And so these are the very brief uh, product summary metrics. Uh, you know, what was found, how long has it been open, what tools found it, et cetera. So in case you wanted to do a, a bake-off against two tools, let's say you were vetting tool to two to similar tools from a vendor and you want to know which one finds more or which one has, um, well, I guess you couldn't do, you probably could do false positive comparison, but it's not uh, quite as intuitive as the other metrics. But so we'll go back up here to the uh, control dropdown, and we will hopefully generate a report. Uh, I'm going to do PDF. And I'm going to let this run for a minute because the, the zap scan is, is semi-large. But so while that's running, uh, there's things like product type metrics, which uh, we don't have great big graphs. So we just uploaded things right now. But you could break out, you know, the individual uh, bug count by severity, uh, what type of vulnerabilities are present. And then the other thing I'll just cover really quick is the, the thing that I use really frequently is, is endpoint comparison. So this shows us from the scans where the most vulnerabilities are for a given endpoint. And then I think I might need to update this. Yep. So if you flag a product type as critical, it will also show health dashboards. So, uh, you know, just depending on what granularity of detail you want, it's there. Uh, the, the higher ups tend to just want to know, you know, what's the health of the product, what's the most vulnerable, et cetera, while engineers and managers might want to know more about the, the types of, of findings and, and why they're being introduced. Okay, hopefully our report is done by now. There's also a advanced report builder. So if you need to put in uh, custom information, executive summaries, uh, there is drag and drops for cover pages, tables of contents, et cetera. Oh, no, it's still running. Does anyone have any questions while this runs? Yeah. Um, Go for it. Yes. So we have both a generic importer and also just a, a plain CSV importer. So if it's easier for you to convert to CSV or the um, generic importer, which is outlined in the, the documentation, that's definitely an option. It's very easy to add additional scanners if you have uh, just a, you know the, the output result, whatever it is, XML or even proprietary, as long as it's easy to parse. And all of our scan files that do the parsing are, are just one file. It's maybe 120 lines, so it, it should be very, very short if you need to adapt or add an additional scanner. Or um, if you're willing to send a, a, a sample scan to the development team, we'll eventually get to it. But right now, we're, we're very swamped, to be honest with you. Yes? Yes. 
Great question. Um, so right now, I believe it is just Jira, unless someone has done additional work. Uh, has, has anyone integrated with Jira before? Had to do, like, so, so Jira's really bad about certain metrics, and I had to do life through time in, in Jira once and make a custom thing. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty awful. Jira was a nightmare, but it, it's the most uh, popular bug tracking system in software development. Um, and so our, our Jira integration is really robust, and I'll get into that very shortly. Um, is it hard to add additional ones? I would say it's semi-difficult. Um, all you would have to do was copy what we've done for Jira, you know, re replace your API calls with the Jira ones, et cetera, um, and it should work, but I would say that's an intermediate level task. I, I saw another question, right? Yes, yes. So there is a model, no, I guess there's not a model per scan. I would say semi-tightly. So we do have to have a specific parser per uh, scanner, but uh, tests are a generic type that holds all scans, if that makes sense. Oh, yes, it finished. I'll get to you in just one second. Okay, so here is the report when it's done. I'm also running on like a, a one gig machine, so it's a little slower than normal. But um, I used to write all my reports in, in DocX, and so the, the problem with that is you have some engineers that write things one way and, and some that like different spacing, and so it looks inconsistent. So I, my hope is that with the Defect Dojo reports, you'll be able to give uh, more consistent reports to either your clients or the dev teams, and you can also replace anything in here that you don't like. So for instance, instead of the Defect Dojo logo, you could put your company logo. But yeah, so it just has all the findings. Uh, by default, it categorizes it by severity, descriptions, mitigations, just your, your standard vulnerability report, but you don't have to write it. And so um, if you're conducting a manual assessment, typically you would use Defect Dojo as a companion tool to, uh, to, to test with. Okay, yes, sorry. Great question. That was something we ran into a lot with retesting. So what you can do is if we go to the uh, engagement, so let's say you were you were redoing the zap scan essentially, and rather than storing it twice, you just want a diff. So if things aren't there anymore, you just want them to close automatically was our philosophy. And so we'll, we'll drill down one more into the zap scan. You go to re-upload scan and you refill this out and it'll automatically do that for you. Well, yeah, you, I'll, I'll stop clicking through. I'm sure you guys get it. Um, any other questions before I get to my lap? Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah, so basically the, the ability to scan multiple products at once from one scan. Um, no, not currently. It's, it's something that is under active development right now because we realize that is uh, a limitation that would make certain people's lives much easier. So um, to do it right now, you would have to probably filter the IPs first and then do separate scans to upload them correctly to the products. But uh, it is coming. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah, so um, th these are all great questions because these are uh, a lot of the things we're actively working on. So at Pearson right now, we are working on 
API integration for check marks and white hat. So um, we want to get to what we call scanner integration 2.0 which is we, we realize right now this is not optimal to have to upload files, especially if your team has limited resources. It would be much more optimal to instead hand Defect Dojo credentials uh, for your API or API keys and then have it completely manage the scanners for you, set up schedules, et cetera. Um, so we are, we are actively working on that. We just added a credential manager to make that easier. And so... Uh, the, the next step will be to do that API integration. I will say, though, the, the one thing that tends to break in Defect Dojo the most is when scanners change their output, which seems to happen fairly frequently. I think that is our, our biggest pain point right now in terms of issues that occasionally spring back up. Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, yes, so how the reports are actually built is we use WKHTML to PDF or to uh, ASCII doc or all the, the WHK, WKHTML extensions. Uh, so as far as customizations go, the, the best use case would be to uh, not, not use the simple reports, but instead, I'll flip back really quick, uh, but instead use the report builder. But the report builder right now would be the, the limit on customization. And so everything from uh, cover pages to custom text. You can also attach images to findings. So if you want like a, a POC image in a report, you can also do that as well. Yeah, awesome, guys. I will get through my last slides, and then I will, I'm not answering your questions. <laughs> Sorry, he, he's my friend. I'm not just being mean. Um, yeah, uh, so just where we are now, again, as a project, one thing we've really tried to do is make Defect Dojo on par with commercial tools in terms of testing, um, because we know it's very important to have a, a seamless experience, and that's one of the things that open source gets knocked on frequently, is if you're relying on an open source tool and it breaks, that's a terrible experience. So to try and combat that, we do have uh, Travis CI that runs against every single code change that happens. But again, right now we're only at about 60% code coverage, give or take. Uh, we have the majority of functionality covered. But again, if you know QE folks that would be interested, we'd, we'd love additional help to build that out further. Uh, and then the JIRA integration, which is, is probably my favorite thing we've done in the last three months. It is a, a completely bi-directional link, which was a, a nightmare to implement. So what this allows is if someone comments in JIRA, it will also show up in Defect Dojo. If you comment on an issue that is in JIRA that is uh, originated from Defect Dojo, that comment will also be pushed to JIRA. If you close it in Defect Dojo, it will be closed in JIRA. If they close it in JIRA, it will be closed in Defect Dojo. Um, you can also even change the product in JIRA. So if someone reassigns a JIRA issue that you created in, in Dojo to another project, it will still maintain that link, which uh, was something we, we realized was an edge case, and we actually had to rewrite the entire thing when we realized it. Uh, so that, that was not fun, but it works most of the time, I think. Uh, yeah, the, the one-click installations, I already talked about and covered that. Oh yeah, and the feature. So we did finish the credential manager that's in there now. So the idea being, rather than having to go back and forth with, with a developer to uh, establish all the necessary resources to start a test, we now have a, a credential manager that you can tie to a product for different environments. So you can set credentials for dev, staging production. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to mention with the password manager. Oh well, I'm sure it'll come to me as soon as I wrap up. But yeah, so we want to make it even easier. Uh, we think we've done a good job on, on getting an initial setup out, but I still think that there's work to do to make it uh, the, the most compatible with... Uh, I, I want to give an easy 
production run button essentially. So right now, right, is set up without SSL, et cetera. We want to offer a pre-hardened image rather than you having to go and do all the configuration. But we, we desperately need help. Desperately, desperately. Uh, right now we have 14 contributors, give or take. Uh, nine or so have contributed over a thousand lines of code. Uh, but the project has really ballooned in the last seven months, give or take, and so we have had a hard time uh, keeping up with all the things we want to go out and achieve because there's uh, so many different directions that people want to take it. And so trying it out, we already saw that through the demo. Uh, these are just the, the resources, so if you need to go back through the presentation, where it is on GitHub, the docs, and we also have a, a demo site, or a, it's really a skeleton demo site, so not quite everything will work in it um, because of resource constraints. But if you just want to see it again and go play with it, we have a Python Anywhere site. And um, yeah, that's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for your time and, and sitting and listening to me blab. I know it was a lot of information. I have Defect Dojo stickers if you would like them. Thank you. And I'll take any other questions that anyone had, except for Matt. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, two questions. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I, I believe so. I believe we expanded the API three weeks ago to include scan files. If not, um, one of the core contributors is working on it. I, I want to say yes, but I don't want to be wrong. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Aaron, if you're here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so second question. Uh, Defect Dojo is, is relatively performant. So... Uh, one organization that I, I helped set it up for, I know, was pushing entries on the order of, of half a million on a four CPU server with 12 gigs of RAM, and it it, it survived. I mean, there, there was a couple of things that were a little slow. We do uh, preload the metrics, so basically it's cached every five minutes to try and make it more efficient, so you're not waiting to munge on all the data for your entire company, um, but... I think it's it's very performant compared to the other options right now. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I uh, so, great question. So the API docs are actually uh, in Defect Dojo itself, which I just realized is, is we should probably copy that over. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Um, but yeah, so as, as far as what you can do with the API, it's, it's all here. We are using uh, TastyPy and Swagger to generate this. So if you're curious what you could do with engagements relative to the API, uh, all that information is here and you can try it out. Uh, to actually do that, you just need to uh, grab your API key and then you can test to make sure that you've that, that you're actually making a call correctly if you're you're having issues. Uh, prop, it, it might take a little bit of time. I don't use the API that much to be honest with you, <laughs> which I should. <laughs> Anyone else? Awesome. Okay, thank you so much again, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope it was enjoyable. Uh, I hope it was helpful. And thank you again.